गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी आई एम ब्रिगेडियर हेमंत महाजन आई हैव सर्व इन द इंडियन आर्मी फॉर लास्ट 37 सेवन ईयर्स ऑन वेरियस बॉर्डर्स लाइक इंडो चाइना बॉर्डर इंडो पाकिस्तान बॉर्डर आई हैव टेकन पार्ट इन एंटी टेररिस्ट ऑपरेशन इन पंजाब एंटी टेररिस्ट ऑपरेशन इन द नॉर्थ ईस्ट एंड इन कश्मीर आफ्टर माई रिटायरमेंट इन टू थाउजेंड नाइन फॉर लास्ट फाइव ईयर्स आई बिन राइटिंग एक्सक्लूसिवली on various facets of national security in the beginning i am very thankful to swatantra vir savarkar rashtriya smarak for giving me an opportunity to record few films covering few facets of national security today i'll talk to you on india's various security challenges with special reference to external and internal security very simply the security of a country can be divided into two parts external security meaning security of its land borders sea borders and air borders and the internal security meaning the security which is there within the country from the perspective of india our borders today are unsafe our borders with china how unsafe uh, they are you come to know when you read daily newspapers Pakistan has been creating lots of problems for us right from independence we know about it we we'll talk about it in detail but even the smaller neighbors are not exactly friendly and they are also posing various challenges from the point of view of national security as far as internal security is concerned it has its origin into this two nation theory uh, we fought wars with pakistan in 1947 48 we fought another war in 1965 for the third one in 1971 and the last war with pakistan was fought in 1999 that is the kargil war after losing the 71 war pakistan realized that it could not take on india in a conventional war therefore they launched another type of a campaign or another type of a war called operation topaz also pronounced as operation topak or operation karakoram how was this war different from the four other wars which pakistan has fought with us it was different in a way that the earlier wars were fought on the national borders in which indian army fought the pakistan army the navy fought the pakistan navy and the air force fought the pakistan air force but in this operation topaz or operation karakoram pakistan started sending arm infiltrators into our country and started creating unrest in various parts of the country the first part where unrest was created was punjab we are all are aware that from 1980 to 1990 the terrorism in punjab was at its peak but because of good work done by the indian army and the punjab police the back of terrorism in punjab was finally broken thereafter Pakistan started creating troubles in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. All of you are aware that that the state of Jammu and Kashmir was very quiet till 1984, 1985. Meaning, right from 1947 to 84, there was nothing untowards happening in this state. But after 84, we started having terrorism in Kashmir. We'll talk about this separately. Today, it has been crushed. but still a different form of terrorism today is continuing in the state of jammu and kashmir the third place where the problem started was nationalism also called as left wing extremism or also called as maoism today nearly 35 to 40% of the india's landmass is affected by nationalism we will talk about it briefly in this presentation and another problem that we started having was having bomb blast and terrorist attacks in the remainder part of the country we had the first set of bomb blast in mumbai in 1993 and thereafter we are having bomb blast all over the country at very irregular intervals these are of two types one is physical attack by armed terrorist as it happened in uh, 2611 or a attack on the indian parliament and having bomb blast as it happened in pune varanasi and so many other places another problem which is confronting us today 
is the radicalization of our society and the communal riots which take place in our country. All, these are all our aspects of internal security about which we will speak briefly later. There are many non-military threats also to India's security. I will just mention them briefly but we will talk about them in detail in subsequent part of this series on national security. These problems which pose a threat to national security are first is non-governance. Today we have elected government in Jammu and Kashmir since last 12 years but they have failed to govern the state of Jammu and Kashmir thereby meeting the aspirations. Similarly the problem of governance in the areas of northeast where it is of a poor quality leading to insurgency, terrorism and separatist movement. Governance is also very very poor in Naxal affected areas because of non-governance today people have risen against the government of the country. Second problem that we face is call it fundamentalism, call it radicalization. Today our society is being radicalized. A large number of people feel that they are an aggrieved party whether true or false but they take arms and carry out lot of undemocratic activities against the country. The next problem that we face is the food security. At times uh, the food prices start dropping down, at times they go up. Even after 66 years of independence, we cannot say that we have achieved food security. In fact, today uh, food inflation uh, uh, is one of the biggest problems facing a common man. And this is one thing which drives him to carrying out a lot of uh, unpatriotic activities. Then we have a problem of energy security. We all know after every 15 or 20 days our petrol prices are revised. Today nearly 80% of our energy requirement is imported. In the event of a war, what will happen to this energy security? Anybody's guess is as good as anybody else's. We have a problem of water security. Uh, in some places we have floods where areas get washed away. Talk of Kosi floods which took place in Uttar, uh, Uttar Pradesh. Talk of floods which took place in Karnataka and even in some parts of Maharashtra. While there are large pieces of land where water is not available. In Maharashtra itself, in one place we start growing sugar cane which requires 10 times more uh, water than required by normal cropping while in other places we supply water by tanker. But when I talk about water security, I am especially ref referring to those river systems which originate from the Tibet highland or from the Tibet plateau, the rivers of Brahmaputra, Sindhu. Today, uh, the waters of Brahmaputra are going to be diverted by China to its area which is affected by drought. We will talk about this later. Next problem that we have is narcotics trade. Now narcotics today is being smuggled into this country from the golden triangle which is well known to you and it spoils our youth. We need to ensure that this narcotics trade is stopped and this narcotics coming into this country is somehow the next part is the demographic invasion which is taking place into this country especially from Bangladesh. It is estimated that nearly 4 to 5 crore Bangladeshis today have infiltrated into this country and our northeast today is being converted into another Bangladesh. With this issue is so serious that uh, we will talk about this as a separate topic by itself. Unfortunately, our leadership today is not paying enough attention to this problem of demographic invasion. We need to do something about it. Next is the techno technology control regime. Today, many Western powers are not letting front end technologies enter into our country. This ensures that we always and perpetually remain dependent upon countries like America or Europe, which are scientifically much more advanced. In addition to this, we have a problem of corruption. 
this issue has been highlighted very very well by the Indian media but I would not talk about it but by one estimate nearly 50% of our economy today is black economy. Uh, the effect on the security is that lot of fake Indian currency notes come into our country. That is what affects our national security. Lot of anti-national NGOs today are funded from abroad, especially the Arabian countries like Saudi, Saudi Arabia, etc., which are spreading radicalization into our country. Our left-wing extremist groups today are also being funded by number of countries from abroad. All this creates problems of national security. We need to control money coming to our NGOs, money coming by Hawala route, illegal money which is coming through various sources so that people who are carrying out undemocratic and anti-national activities are not funded. There is a great philosopher Chanakya or Kautilya hundreds of years back he said something which is very relevant today. He says any country faces four types of enemy. There is one of external origin and internal abatement. The second one is of internal origin and external abatement. The third one is of external origin and external abatement. And the fourth enemy is of internal origin and of internal abatement. And he says out of these four types of enemy that any nation faces, it is the internal enemy which is aided and abated by forces within the country which is most dangerous and we need to tackle it in, uh, in the first instance. And the examples of these are various internal security problems which our country is facing today. So what he talked about hundreds of years back today also is very very relevant but we are not paying adequate attention. If you try to classify as to which of these threats is more serious, the internal threat or the external threat, are the land borders of Pakistan more insecure or, or are the Chinese border more insecure or there is a more problem from the Bangladesh border. When we look at the map of India that we find that today we are in a neighborhood which is surrounded by countries which are very unstable, which are getting radicalized and which are also the biggest source of terrorism in the world. Today, if any terrorist attack takes place anywhere in the world, its origin are either in Afghanistan or in Pakistan. And Afghanistan and Pakistan are our immediate neighbors. Today, our coastlines are insecure. 26-11, the 10th terrorists came from the coast area. Uh, in the recent past also, there were a number of ships which were unmanned. Uh, two of them came to the Zuhu coastline about a year back, evading all the securities which we supposed to have put in its place. Our Nepal border is insecure, our Bhutan border is insecure, our Bangladesh border is insecure. So the question to be asked is, which is the border of ours which is completely secure? And the answer is, unfortunately, we need to improve on all our borders. What we will do is, we will very briefly carry out a review of the, inter, uh, of the situation, security situation which is existing on various borders and also decide whether the existing security apparatus there, is it adequate or, or it requires some change. Uh, the borders of our country today are the land borders. Uh, uh, later you can have a look at the map in the presentation. We have the sea or the coastal borders and we have the air borders. To this another border is added that is the space border. Today people can also observe what is happening in your country from the space by putting satellites there. If we have to protect our country then we need to protect ourselves from land, sea, air and space borders. How do we do it? We will try and consider it country wise. The first country obviously is Pakistan. Pakistan today shares border with, uh, with four 
of our states. The most important border it shares is with uh, Kashmir, uh, Indian, uh, Indian state of Kashmir. And what is happening today in Kashmir is very well covered by media. And we will also talk about Kashmir uh, in a more detailed manner in the subsequent part of the presentation. But what is important today is armed infiltrators are infiltrating in a big way from the line of control. Line of control today is manned by the Indian Army while the international border with Pakistan is manned by the border security force which comes under the Home Ministry. Today, the LOC or the line of control has actually been sealed now and it is manned by the Army and as per the latest report, not even 50 to 70 terrorists have infiltrated from the LOC into our country in 2013. However, the rate of infiltration is definitely increasing from the international border which starts from Jammu downwards going to the state of Punjab, Rajasthan, Gujarat and of course the coastal areas also. Now this, these are the states which we need to uh, make more secure. Uh, Pakistan today is creating all kinds of problems for us. First is infiltrating arms, ammunition, armed terrorists, infiltrating fake Indian currency notes, infiltrating drugs into our country, infiltrating subversive elements into this country and so on and so forth. Uh, we will talk about uh, the aspects of terrorism and Kashmir in which Pakistan's activities will get covered in a better manner. Uh, we will now move over to the, to the next border that is the Indo-China border. The Indo-China border is not continuous. It, is, uh, it can be divided into three parts. Border which is bordering the Ladakh and the Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakh Pachal state of India. Second is the border bordering uh, the state of Sikkim and then is the border bordering the state of Arunachal. This we fought a war with China in 1962. After 1962, a lot of people believe that this border is, has been quiet, meaning there has been no firing. But that is not strictly true. Even today, this border is not so quiet. Just for information, in 1967, uh, we had the Chola or the Nathula incidents in which the Indian Army and the Chinese Army clashed at Chola in which nearly 100 Chinese soldiers were killed and we also lo uh, lost number of our soldiers also. After that, in, if my memory is correct, in 1984-85, we had the Sukhdurangchu Valley incidents in Arunachal Pradesh where Chinese intruded. However, after Indian Army put pressure on them, they later withdrew. But in addition to this, what is today happening is, uh, Presently, the Chinese, uh, the Chinese army is carrying intrusions in the state of Ladakh. It is carrying intrusions in the state of Arunachal. They are, of course, very well highlighted in our media. In fact, just yesterday's report says that in Ladakh, the Chinese have been intruding at least two to, two to three times in every 15 days. Will there be a war with China? Will we have to use our armed forces with China? Uh, is war with China the only option? Is China troubling us by any other means? These are large number of questions we will try and answer when we have a separate presentation on China. The next border that I will now move to will be uh, Nepal. We will now talk about the security situation on the Indo-Nepal border. Uh, if you look at Nepal, it is actually the only country which can be called as a Hindu country. However, five years back, after the Maoists came into power, they have converted themselves from a Hindu country into a secular country. Uh, last five years has been a very turbulent political situation in Nepal. The situation in Nepal affects India's security for various reasons. Uh, very recently, elections were again held in Nepal, in which the Nepal Maoist party was defeated and a combination of other parties like Nepali Congress party etc. won the elections. Uh, what is the effect of all this happening into, uh, onto our country? 
Nepal is one country where Maoism has taken a lot of roots and there are reports that the Maoists in Nepal are even helping the Maoists in our country. In addition to this, today nearly 25 to 30 percent of Nepal population, especially on the Nepal-India border, has been filled up by the Bangladeshis. There is a network of madrasas and mosques in this area. And last three years, it has been reported that more number of terrorists have infiltrated from the Indo-Nepal border rather than the Indo-Pakistan border. Just to give a few examples, Abu Jundal came from the Indo-Nepal border, Abdul Karim Tunda came from that border. Another terrorist, Saifuddin, if I remember the name collect, uh, correctly, he also came from this border. So obviously, these borders are not safe. Presently, these borders are being looked after by the Sima Suraksha Bal, which comes under the Home Ministry. They need to improve their border management much better than what is happening presently. They need to increase number of check posts. They have to improve upon their patrolling. They have to have a lot of surveillance means. They have to develop intelligence. In addition to the militants, lot of armed, a uh, lot of uh, smuggling of arms also take place from the Nepal border. In addition to this, drugs are also imported from, from the Nepal border. Human trafficking also takes place from the Nepal border. Uh, India and Nepal are two countries in which the Nepalese coming into India do not require any passport or in other words, it's an open border. While the Nepalese have done a very good job of getting recruited into the Indian Army, however, there are a lot of subversive elements which come and create problems of law and order into our country. So we definitely need to regulate this border in a much better manner than is being done now. Another threat which is coming, which is going to become big in the days to come is the increasing Chinese influence into Nepal. Of course, they have been supporting the Nepal Mao's party, no doubt on that. In addition to that, Chinese have beaten India in the aid politics. They are constructing roads there. There are reports that the railway line from Lhasa is expected to be joined with the Nepal's capital Kathmandu. Of course, it would not be easy, but definitely it is going to be made possible in the days to come. There are a number of Chinese study centers which have been opened in Nepal. All this ensures that the influence of China in day-to-day -day life in Nepal is increasing, thereby increasing the hostility between India and Nepal. So we need to definitely guard these borders in much better manner than what we are doing presently. Can we in, uh, give identity cards to people who are residing on the borders? Can we upgrade the police stations? Can we monitor madrasas and mosques which have come on these borders? Can we increase the presence of customs and excise and revenue officials in this area? Can we have immigration check posts? Can we have passes issued to the people who come there? There are lots of other things which we can do uh, by which we can ensure that nearly 1700 kilometers of Indo-Nepal border is made more safe. After this, we come to the next country that is Bhutan. Bhutan that way is a very small country and the border with India is nearly 700 kilometers bordering the Indian states of Sikkim, West Bengal, Assam and Arunachal. Actually, Bhutan is the only country which can actually be called as a really very very good friend. However, there are a lot of changes which are taking place in Bhutan. Some of it good and some definitely required to be observed more critically. Democracy is uh, taking roots now in Bhutan and about five years back, the king of Bhutan wanted democracy to be started in Bhutan. The political party which came into power 
wasn't exactly very friendly with India. However, uh, presently a party which is ruling the, uh, the country of Bhutan is definitely very very friendly. Today Bhutan can meet our energy needs because most of the rivers which flow from there can be dammed there and electricity generated from there. There is a lot of construction activities which is going on in the forms of roads in Bhutan which is of great use to us. Uh, this country actually is a good friend. However, in the period between 2000 and 2004, insurgent groups from the northeast uh, established their training camps in this area. And you must be aware that in the year 2004, Indian Army with the help of Bhutanese Army uh, carried out an operation against these insurgents in this area and nearly 600 of these insurgents, oblique terrorists were killed and many captured. The reason is this is a very sparsely populated country and the country has an army which is very small and it is not able to show its presence in all parts of the country. Presently, there is no reports of any camps in that area. However, we definitely need to keep a watch over the borders here because any time when the security forces increase pressures on various insurgent groups in the northeast India, it is likely that they will cross over into Bhutan and use them as a, some kind of a safe sanctuary. This border also is manned by the Sima Suraksha Bal and again here also we need to have a network of surveillance, network of uh, various police posts, patrolling etc. so that we can keep a watch on subversive elements if any in this area. After Bhutan, we come down to the state of Bangladesh. Now Bangladesh is one country which is having borders with many states of India that is Nagaland, Manipur, Assam, West Bengal etc. This country came into existence in 1971 because of India. Initially for first 5-6 years our relations with them were very good. But thereafter a series of elections took place and out of the two parties there, the Awami National League and the Bangladesh Nationalist Party, Awami League has been very friendly with us. However, the Bangladesh Nationalist Party led by Khalida Zia had its share of problems with our country. The security problem which we face from Bangladesh is basically illegal migration of Bangladeshis into our country and this is one problem which has reached such a gigantic proportion that it is estimated that today there may be anything up to 4 to 5 crore Bangladeshis who may have migrated into our country. Near today, 30% of uh, the population of state of Assam is Bangladeshis. 30 to 35% of the population of West Bengal is Bangladeshis. And the smaller states of Northeast are also flooded by them. We are going to talk on the subject of demographic invasion separately. But suffice to say that this is a very, very serious problem. And we as a country need to look at it very seriously. Otherwise, a day is not far away when in 2020, a Bangladeshi may be a Chief Minister of West Bengal and Assam. Uh, today, almost all the border areas between Bangladesh and India are flooded with Bangladeshi immigrants. And we need definitely to keep a tag of these people. Now, after looking at the Bangladesh border, we will come down to the coastal area. Now, I am Brigadier Hemant Mahajan who is putting nearly 37 years of service in the Indian Army. I was commissioned into 7 Maratha Light Infantry, one of the famous battalions of Indian Army in June 1975. During my service, I have taken part on all the operations in which Indian Army participated from 1975 onwards. I have taken part 
on anti-terrorist operation in Jammu and Kashmir, anti-infiltration operations which Indian Army did again on the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir. During the peak of terrorism in Punjab, we were involved in Operation Raksha in Punjab. In addition to this, I have served on the Rajasthan and the other Pakistani, uh, Indo-Pakistan borders. I have served on the Indo-China borders, on the Indo-Myanmar borders. And we have taken part in various operations which took place, including serving in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. For all the action that we did in Kashmir, my battalion was awarded unit citation and about 90 gallantry awards. In, again, when I was commanding a brigade in Jammu and Kashmir, again a lot of awards were won by my brigade. My last four years of my service in the army, I joined Army War College where I was teaching officers of the rank of colonels in the higher command course. After my retirement on 31st January 2009, I have been writing very regularly in various newspapers on various facets of national security, both in Marathi and in English. I have been taking part in on various debates on t the TV channels in the Marathi TV channels, 24 hours news channels, Hindi TV channels and also some of the English TV channels. In addition to this, I have taken part, we are taking part in many seminars based upon national security. I am a member of two think tanks, Center for Advanced Strategic Studies based in Pune and Forum for Integrated National Security which is based in Bombay. One is involved in talking on various facets of national security on many talks which, uh, which are co coordinated by various NGOs. For my service in the army, I was awarded Yuddha Seva Medal for the uh, good work that I had done, a gallantry award in Kashmir. In addition, I have been awarded Chief of Army Staff's Commendation Card. Swatantri Vir Savak Rashtriya Smarak asked me to I am on the working committee of Swatantri Vir Savak Rashtriya Smarak and on their behalf we have produced some films covering various facets of national security. The films include India's external security that is how we should deal with China and Pakistan. Second is how should we deal with our borders during peace time with Bangladesh, with Nepal, Myanmar and Sri Lanka. How should we look after the coastal security. We face serious internal security problems. We have covered four of these. These are the extent the nationalism in our country today is increasing exponentially. How do we uh, counter the threat of nationalism or Maoism? Kashmir proxy war is still going on. What else can we do in Kashmir? Northeast India is being converted into a Bangladesh. How do we meet the challenge of stopping Bangladeshization of Northeast? And how do we stop bomb blasts that are taking place in the rest of the country? All these films are in English. One film is in Marathi, in which we have spoken as to how do we take on the challenge of the Chinese dragon. In addition, there is one film on motivation, one young soldier, Lieutenant Vijay Thafar, how he sacrificed his life. It's a film which will motivate the younger generation. I am sure that you will enjoy listening to these films and you should pass it on to, you should pass, pass on the contents of these videos to as many friends and relations as possible so that the spirit of national uh, uh, the spirit of national security is imbibed by every citizen of the country jai